AI is one of the hot topics of the moment. Do we really know how to harness its capabilities, however? I'm Mike Loder. I'm Alyssa Blackburn. Tech Edge starts now. Welcome to Tech Edge, presented by the team at AvPoint, where each episode we delve into the latest industry trends for business, IT, and their significance in today's ever-changing landscape. Now, we're talking all things AI today. It seems to be something that I have heard of. Yes, yes, it's been mentioned once or twice. Once or twice. Yeah. Take us through a little bit about what we're talking to, about today. So let's let's back up a little bit. Of course, we are here in Australia. We know that it's summer in Australia. Mike. What did you spend your summer holidays doing? I spent my summer holidays swimming and eating and hanging out with my family and friends right. and my chihuahua Digby. Oh, of course, of course. Well, I, in very on brand for me, spent my summer teaching my 70 odd year old father how to use AI. Um, here I am, in do. fact, Look at, at you the go. beach, at the beach, teaching my lovely, lovely dad how to use how to use AI. Um, but I think what this, what I really wanted to talk about today is just how prevalent AI is everywhere and how it really is for everyone. Yes, I think that's important to say because some people hear the words AI and they go, eh. Yeah, and well, that's exactly what my dad did. So when he was asking me some questions about how to do things, my first response was, have you tried AI for that? Um, and then we did with, with what was actually a great outcome. So I'm nice. really happy to welcome friend of the show, John Hodges, who's the Chief Product Officer at Avpoint, and he's going to share some of his insights on the advancements of AI and what they're shaping up to be in 2025. Good John, to see you, John. Welcome so much. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here. So let's get right into it. What are the most significant advancements in AI technology that we're seeing in 2025? I feel like ChatGPT is now old news, even though it's only about two years old, three maybe now. Yeah, and I absolutely agree with you. I think I predict this year will be the year of practical innovation around AI, uh, specifically concepts called AI as a service and organizations doing more to embed AI in everyday workloads that we're familiar with. I was getting my hair cut recently and my barber talked to me about, you know, I've, I've heard I could be using chat GPT to help me in my marketing. And that's an excellent thought that you could be using AI more and more, but we need to move away from this idea that these large models are going to be solving very specific problems for us. When there's an opportunity for businesses and technology vendors like AppFine or Microsoft or Google to be incorporating that technology into things that we do every day. So here at the hotel room I have, uh, there's a little card right next to the phone that says, you know, before you call the front desk, have you considered talking to our concierge bot? So it's a very purpose-built mm. version of AI that's designed around a very specific task we can interact with. I really That's like cool. that. Yeah. I really like that. We need to get over to whatever hotel John is it makes staying sense to me, in at the it? moment. <laughs> definitely. But John, we, what, the one you've just referenced there is definitely all about user experience and how we can make that user experience a whole lot better. So tell us a little bit about how organisations can leverage AI to continue to enhance that user experience across products and services that they're they're offering. Yeah, and what's interesting is it's no different than uh, hiring a new product manager or a new analyst to come work with you and partner with you uh, on projects. When you coach AI, you're essentially teaching it specific tasks, who you want it to be, how you want it to present, how you want it to be interacting with people. And so I see organizations uh, having this chance to really extend what agents are capable of how they can be coached to really support very practical use cases. And so as an example, uh, we use it internally to help us write uh, product spec documents, to help us write requirements and really think through problems that we hadn't been thinking of before. But this isn't just a generic large language model. This is something specifically tuned to specifically coach us on a very specific task. And so it requires that level of discipline for companies to move from AI as a broad investment to something that can actually solve a problem and coach users through specific problems, not just as a generic, we can use AI for that, or there's an easy button, but mm. very much how does this impact me on my day-to-day -day business? So I see a lot more coaching coming from companies about 
how these models can be very practical in their day-to-day -day use cases. Mm. So yeah. what I think we're really talking about here is outcome-driven AI. So rather than just saying, yes. oh, AI is, AI is going to solve this nebulous problem that we haven't really haven't really determined yet, what we want to do is, first of all, figure out the outcome that we need to get to and then use AI to help us get to that outcome. So like any problem that we're trying to solve, mm. if we don't know what our outcome should be, we're never actually going to solve the problem whether or not we're using it you know it doesn't matter if we throw AI into that AI might help us get there faster for sure but if we don't know what that outcome should be we've got a problem we always have to start with that with that outcome focus yeah, and you'll still end up walking in circles absolutely John I'm curious to know a little bit more about the ethical concerns and ensuring responsible AI development how's that being addressed at the moment I've spoken to some people who say to me you know when you do a chat GPT uh, prompt you kill three fish or something like that the climate <laughs> elements of this as well I'm not laughing at the fish by the no. way I'm just like the, 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 the yeah the yeah. comment of it and but of course yeah. people are having this conversation what have you witnessed out there yeah well aside from the the market impact today of uh some vendors Ooh. talking about how uh, it is possible to do AI with less resources than we originally thought. Uh, there may be less of an impact on the environment than we originally thought. Um, but beyond that, uh, I do speak with a lot of uh, buyers that are interested in how they can use AI ethically when it comes to how much information it knows about users. Mm. Uh, what jobs can it replace? How can it actually be used to augment a user, not replace a user? Uh, how does it reason over data that it, it should reasonably and responsibly own, and not just simply because we have it, it can see it? Um, innovators uh, will always want to push the boundaries. Uh, I say that as an innovator myself. We are always going to want to see how broad of a use case we can apply this to. Um, but it's not always up to political activists or to governments to really set mm. the first standards. Uh, if we look at what happened when cookies came out, it took quite a long time before we started seeing the user consent choices pop up on websites. Mm. And so what really comes down to is us, us as a community setting those standards and raising each other's standards. And so you can see now on a lot of companies' websites, ourselves included, uh, responsible AI commitments and usage patterns when we go into our trust centers to say to users and to our customers, here's how we're going to be responsible with your data. It really does require us working together as a community to look after each other and to set standards that we can know our users will feel comfortable with in the end. Mm. Well said. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting point, although it probably says more about me that when John said cookie, I immediately went to mm, chocolate I, chip. I did yeah, the same. But um, <laughs> that, might be, that might be for the Mike and Alyssa cooking show coming, coming soon to a, a show near you. Is it? Um, oh, I'm, I'm all in, believe me. Um, one of the things, though, and I think a, a really good uh, segue from talking about ethical and responsible AI is about how AI can improve accessibility and inclusivity. Now, this is obviously a topic that's really close to my mm. heart. You can go back to, to some of our previous episodes where we've talked about this. We did an episode with my son, actually, who, who has a vision impairment and how he uses technology to help him. How do we take this great new technology and make it better for everybody, not just, not just a subset of people? Yeah, and it, it's such an inspiring story. It's one of my favorites. We've talked about that uh, outside the show as well, how much of a, an impact technology has had in your family. and. There is such a fear around technology and new adoption that without those stories, it's impossible for us to rally around how amazing mm. this technology can be. And, and really to your 70 year old father's <laughs> point to <laughs> overcome that fear and to get to the point where you can feel comfortable. Um, <clears throat> when I went to school for engineering, what I realized was that there were a lot of incredibly smart people around me uh, that did not get the recognition that they deserve simply because they lacked communication abilities. It wasn't just about communication of how their technology worked, that, that's fine, they could take care of that. What it came down to is, well, how did this technology impact the world? What are possible use cases? How do they put it in terms that a marketing team or a legal team could understand and consume? Um, and so we've already seen the, the possibility using things like Microsoft Copilot as to how this can be a game changer for increasing confidence in very shy or new salespeople. Uh, improving communication skills among engineers where 
you know, uh, German might not be their first language and that might be the target market for their products. We've seen it really up the game for our weaknesses. And I think that's one of the things that's interesting. I was a slow adopter of AI in my day-to-day -day use case until there was a lot of time for me to reflect on where are my weaknesses? Where are those areas that we can use AI to help augment that? And so for me, that came from task management, email management, a little bit less on the communication side, but much more on the organization side. But I know that we've had plenty of opportunities to coach very young folks uh, with high anxiety through their mm -hmm. challenges with communication, specifically because AI could coach them through that and give them the words that they couldn't form on their own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's definitely I a really new like era that. of communication yeah, in many forms. And they, even reflecting on how I've been using AI mm. in that instance, I was like, oh, I'm coaching myself. Isn't that nice? Yeah. But let's talk a little bit about the impact you foresee AI having on the job market and, of course, the workforce more broad, broadly speaking in the coming years as it uh, continues to learn and uh, hopefully live alongside us. Yeah. Um, so AI is seen as a productivity tool today. Uh, we prompt an agent and an agent comes to our aid. I tell it I missed a flight and it helps me rebook. I tell it that I have an issue with my hotel room and it will help coach me through what to do next. In the event of our products, I tell it that I'm, I'm stuck, I can't use this feature, it will coach me how to use that feature. It is a very prompt driven agent. Hmm. And where I see this market really shaping over the course of the next couple of years is how to give more agency to these agents and give them the chance to actually be a part of the conversation, be someone that initiates the conversation. So I have noticed that you struggle to reply timely with your emails. Here are steps that can help you. I have noticed that when you presented this PowerPoint, you have gone over time every single time you've done it. <laughs> and how do we give agents that kind of agency to be more part of our life the same way you would expect uh, a good peer or a good coach to be there. So to the one to have the hard conversations with us that we oftentimes lack when we're being self-reflective. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to that transformation, to go from something that's there when I need it to something that is actually being useful on a day-to-day -day basis, something that dialogues with me. And I'm yeah. very excited about the prospect in the future for that. Uh, it sounds a little bit like gentle parenting. Yeah, very, very much <laughs> yes. so, definitely, definitely. John, thank you so much for that. I think that that you've really given us some some good stuff to good stuff to think about. I think if we if we think about it, we obviously want to, we want to be outcome focused. We want to think about how this lifts up people who may not have that opportunity somewhere else, but also how can we use it to get ahead of even identifying that there's a problem. Clearly, John's been watching some of my PowerPoint presentations. Speaking of going over, um, <laughs> but we really appreciate your time. Self-aware as well. I, I, I need it as much as you. So. <laughs> John, thank you so much for joining us on the program. We look forward to speaking again very soon. It is a pleasure. Another great episode there. It's always Absolutely. exciting to have a chat about these things. And Absolutely. somehow you and the team at Avpoint always make me feel a little bit more optimistic about oh, these technologies. Good. Which is that's good. It's just because we're not you. telling you the truth. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely are. Okay. This is Ticker. We'll be right back. You're watching Ticker. We'll have more in just a few minutes.